Hay Floss Tube. It has been, what, like a month now? Um, and because it's been a month, you get no organization from me today at all. Um, I have everything spread out. It's pretty much a disaster down here. But I've, and here comes a cat. I've got so much stuff at this point that I, I need to just go through it as quick as I can so I can put it away. And then I'm working on trying to figure out what's going to work to do a weekly or bi-weekly even. Uh, bi-weekly meaning twice a week, not every other week. Um, update during the week so it doesn't take as long because I know some people really like short videos. Sometimes I'm in the mood for really short videos so anyway I'm going to uh, just jump right in and here comes the other cat. <laughs> okay so I did have a couple of finishes. Um, I finished my diamond painting I am in love with this. Oh, so pretty. This is going to go in my bedroom. Um, our bedroom is done in gray, red, and gold. Cat, please don't stand on that. Um, so I am going to frame it. I'm thinking probably just a black frame and get this on the wall. So that was my first finish. Then, this was actually a start and a finish. But no, not an FFO. This is, pile to put away. this was a new pattern that came out, I'm looking for something white to put behind this. This was a new pattern that came out from um, Frosted Pumpkin and I think I bought it like the day they showed it. And it was just adorable. I had to get it, had to stitch it for Ellery's room. I'm probably just gonna turn it into a pillow that she can hang on her doorknob just like I did um, the Nemo one for Ethan. And, oops, I did use an opal fabric and her tail and the border. That is a Krynik. I love it. I think it turned out awesome. So that was finish number two. And I probably should do an FFO on that soon because Ellery's really going to want it, right? And then last, I finished finished this the other night, and this was let me pull out the magazine. This was from Cross Stitch and uh, Cross Stitch and Needlework, November of 2014. It is the October pattern. I heard somebody. Oh, the cat again. I guess the kids are upstairs with my husband. They are working on dinner. I guarantee this will be the only night that it doesn't take my children 90 minutes to eat a meal and they're gonna be down here but anyway I got October finished and I stitched this on picture this plus murky it's 32 count very happy with that and I just pulled a bunch of random threads that I had um, I also heard a rumor because I posted this on Instagram and I heard a rumor that oh, are you kidding me this is Romeo he's the one that you didn't get to meet yet that's Romeo he's the lover and come here Remy there's Revy again he's the one that made his appearance last time yeah and he's the little turd um Anyway, I posted this on Instagram. Somebody asked who it was, who was the designer. It's Kathy Haberman. Um, and then somebody posted that they heard a rumor or they know for sure but don't know when that, hey, no, if you chew that cord, you will die. That um, Kathy is kind of tweaking these and going to re-release the whole set, which would be awesome. whips. I'm moving pretty quick because I really don't want to be here for three hours. Hold on. No, come on. Get over here. These cats are like children. They're fine until I'm trying to do something. This is my diamond painting whip. Super close to done. 
If I wasn't going on retreat this weekend, I would probably be able to finish it this weekend. I've worked on quite a bit the last month. You saw the one completed diamond painting, the two completed cross stitch. I have worked on my AAN butterfly that I'm stitching all in beads. And this is on fabric by um, hand dyed by Rolanda on Etsy. I'm just in love with her fabrics too. And that's how far I am. I, I can't wait to finish this. I am going to take this on uh, retreat with me. I leave tomorrow morning. So I should have significant progress hopefully to show when I get back. Other whips. I've been working on this one a lot lately because I was trying to do it as a stitch along with Carrie. Um, House of Floss and Fluff. It was Barbara Anna ready for takeoff. There's there, no glare. Revy, no. And I purchased some bright green linen. This is where I'm at. This will be a quick finish. I'm not gonna take the hoop off, but you know, this side's finished. I just have to finish the bone, her face, this jack-o'-lantern, some strings, and a little sign. It's so close to done. Um, so that's actually going with me to retreat as well. I am working on pick, I still haven't packed. I leave tomorrow morning at 9.30, but it's cool. Um, what was I saying? I'm taking projects, I'm trying to take projects that I have like halfway or almost halfway done or more so I can try to get some finishes done. Um, because I'm going to have time to sit and dedicate to work on it until it's done. Um, I'm also taking this project, hopefully it sees some love. This is the model that I'm stitching for the shop. I really need to get this done. So I have this panel and this panel complete and I've been working on these two panels and then I still have to do the Halloween one in the center. But this is where I'm at. I've got one owl almost completely finished and then I'm kind of jumping back and forth. When I need a break from all of this orange, I jump over here and do a little bit and then I jump when I'm tired of thread changes I jump back. So it's kind of a back and forth on this one. <sighs> Doubt it will get done before Halloween, unfortunately. I'd really have to work on that and nothing else. Um, that's it for whips? Yes, because I had the finishes. Okay, so that's it for whips. I had quite a few exchanges that I was a part of as well. Okay, that's something different. So this was, I'm. these are not even going in any kind of order. This was a cross stitch and ATC card uh, um, exchange on Facebook and the theme for, this must have been July. No, no, I guess it was August. Um, and the theme was antique. And Diane stitched this beautiful Fabergé egg for me. So much sparkly thread. And I just realized she had her, oh, nice. Um, I had saved the return address from that um, envelope and she actually wrote it on the back of the card. And then these great stickers. Super cool. Thank you, Diane. If you watch. I'm running out of places to put things. This was my L and T, L and T D stash uh, Facebook group. Um, it's a D stash group, a, a stash unload type group, but they also are trying to do some fun things for members, uh, get to know each other, that kind of thing. So there was an exchange and they paired people up and gave them a chance to chat and uh, get to know each other. And then we swapped um, packages. So I was paired up um, 
man, this is okay. So I'm well, yeah. This was my in my package. Christmas favorites. That is super cute. I will definitely stitch that. I just don't know when. And then she also made me two needle minders, J and a flamingo. Turned out we both um, liked flamingos. And apparently flamingos are a new thing for me. I suddenly like them. That's cool. And then this co uh, cozy, can cozy, let's flaminga, flamingo. And then, oh, she also had some tasty treats that I may or may not have eaten all of them. They were delicious. And I, my ATC exchange. This must have been July. And the theme was beach. And this was from, um, this was from Catherine Reed. And this is the little ATC she made. I love it. I love lighthouses. Very cute. And yes, this was July. It's on the back. So thank you, thank you. And then she also sent, I'll put this back in the envelope. She also sent two little needle minders. And this is a um, Thread Pickers Silks Denim Dreams. Really pretty. I've never stitched with this, so I'm excited to try that. And then, let's see if I can block some of that light. I'm still working on a better lighting situation, but I've got a couple of lamps that have improved it over the last time I tried to film in the basement, so we're gonna go with it. Um, again, I'm gonna butcher this. I know I've tried to pronounce it before, Jodiri Designs, but it's really pretty. Um, it's called Groovy 70s. Uh, I believe, yep, that's it for exchanges. You guys, I'm not even kidding when I say I have an insane amount here, and I've got to, I've got to stop. I've got to stop. Um, I did cancel my Fabric of the Month from Stephanie, and the reason I did is because, well, first, because I added more to my Victorian Motto Sampler um, monthly. I now am going to be getting 12 limited edition as well as 12 prim floss. So I had to let something go. But the, the great thing about Stephanie, there's a cat, the great thing about Stephanie's fabrics is her fabric of the month gets listed on her website the following month. So if it's a color I really want, I can buy it anyway. Um, and I'm not worried about the time it takes for the dyeing. It's not a big deal. But some of these other fabric of the months, you don't have the chance to buy that fabric color again. So that was kind of my thinking on that. And I'm debating, debating dropping color in cotton as well to kind of justify what I've picked up in Victorian motto. We'll see. Um, let me do, let me do gifts next before haul. Um, I got this kit, this gal, um, Melanie, she actually lives right in Lansing with me. Super cute card. Um, she sent me an email and said that she had ordered this kit, Riolis kit off of eBay and didn't realize that the chart was colored and she can't read the colored charts. Asked me if I wanted the kit. So pretty. And this is actually a Riolis kit that has this six strand floss instead of like that wool floss. No glare there. Super pretty. So I was excited. Um, and we've been exchanging emails. It's been fun chatting with her. So thanks, Melanie. Susan sent me a little package. And it was funny because her package arrived on the same day that 
I had a package shipped to her and it arrived at her house. So it was funny. Cute little card. And she had some random patterns in here for me. Cat and mouse sampler. Um, Mary. Be Mary, sorry. Another Bent Creek. I love these little Bent Creeks. Um, what else does she have in here for me? Praiseworthy Stitches. Harvest House. That was cute. Glendon Place. Uh, where's the name? Halloween Luck. I gotta find some fabric like that to stitch it on. And I think this, I think this came in package was from Susan. Maybe not. Maybe this was a, this might have been a stash unload pickup. I'm not sure now. Everything got thrown in this bag and sat upstairs on my chair to come downstairs for the last month. So things kind of got jumbled. And since we're on patterns, I also picked these up on Stash Unload. And this actually was from Jackie. Um, Cross my stitches. And I picked up two of the Cricut Collection months. First one is March. March is my birth month, so I had to pick that up. Plus, there's not really a whole lot to decorate with for March. I mean, shamrocks, but, you know, it's not a major holiday. And then I also picked up October. And... Um, Susan and I are going to start this together at our retreat in October. Appropriate. This came from Stash and Load. Just a really pretty holiday wreath. This arrived today. It is the, um... Little help from our friends Stitching Circle Silver Needle. And it is the full kit. And this one, the first month was designed by Samplers Not Forgotten. 100 hearts. And it says, 100 hearts would be too few to carry all my love for you. Super cute. And then they have a little pocket there for scissors. So you get... All of the supplies for that including the linen and then it looks like there's also a thread picker and marking pins very cute and okay so then at one point I saw I don't even know how I came across this this image online but it was for um, a black swan pattern that I saw and it was it's called dragons by the fire and I wanted it to stitch for my husband for a Christmas stocking um, I'm at the point now where I'd like to stitch a stocking for each of us and I'll be starting my own in December it's the Stony Creek the newest Stony Creek magazine cover had the light the stocking with the lighthouse and cardinals that's gonna be mine so I found this one online and I checked eBay I checked Etsy I posted in a couple of D stash groups that I was in search of granted I didn't do a whole lot more searching than that but somebody commented on and I, I'm sorry I don't remember names but somebody told me that um, they found one at um, Niecy's uh, needlework down in Georgia on her online so I picked it up. I'm really excited to stitch this. It's gonna be super pretty. I don't know if my husband really wants pretty, but I don't care. And the dragon is down here all curled up. So I'm gonna start, and because no chart travels alone, I picked up the black work dragon too. Um, not sure when I'm gonna start it, but it's, I'm not getting rid of that one. That one's getting stitched. Next, Piscornu. This one's super cute. I'm going to stitch that for myself. Oh, here. Let me 
just turn it. Butterflies. Next, Noah's Ark. Still planning on stitching these all um, vertical so that I can do like a bell pull. And then it's, uh, it, well, now it's September, but last month, August, I had to pick up my free Stony Creek pattern. And it didn't make sense to just get just the pattern and pay shipping. So I actually ordered the fabric, the floss, and then the button packs for all of the previous charts as well as August. I don't remember whose video it was, but somebody was saying that when the free one comes out, they add that to their cart and then they pick up the button pack that goes with it and just put the button pack right in the pattern. I'm not sure why I didn't think of that. But that's my plan from now on. If I ever want the free pattern, get the little accessories to go with it and put them together. Cool, right? Oh, I said I was going to do gifts and I jumped, completely jumped <laughs> out of there. Okay, so <laughs> Susan sent me something, Melanie sent me something. <laughs> I got sidetracked, squirrel. Um, Jackie, cross my stitches, sent me something. She made me this gorgeous project roll quilted. I've already got my hummingbird in there to keep it from getting wrinkled. I, I'm in awe. Like, I, I mean, I know how to sew, but again, we, we all know at this point that I'm lazy, right? So, thank you, Jackie. I, I was floored when I opened this up, and I was also so curious before I opened it up because I couldn't figure out what it was with, with the wrapping the way it was. Um, I was also pretty impressed because I think this was in my mailbox so apparently my mailbox is pretty big I don't know I, I'm pretty sure it was because um, it surprised me excellent place cat not. okay then I got this goodie package and this this was just amazing and um, way above and beyond what it needed to be. Um, I let Kim borrow a pattern. And it was a pattern that I started for Stitch Mania. Um, this is the pattern. It's a Blackbird Designs. And she wanted to stitch it, and she asked if, you know, about borrowing or, or getting it from me when I was done, whatever. And I said, you can just use it now. And, um, because I, I, we know how many whips I have. This was not a priority necessarily. So I sent that off to her, and when she sent it back, I, you guys, I just, I cried nice um, project bag excuse me piece of 32 count raw silver Belfast there's some sparkle um, Erica Michaels nativity berry which I do already have so this will be a giveaway at, giveaway at some point watch for that one this shepherd's bush Try not to get a glare on there. There we go. Because, you know, nativities. <laughs> Come adore. I have to see if I can find that button. Super cute. And that's not all. I mean, it, I just... Another little bag. And in the bag... Some buttons. And the coolest little needle tin case. The owl. And when I opened it up, magnet strips. 
can use those to put needles on. Two spools of Kynet. And this, this is so cool. This owl, and it's a magnifying glass. And there's a magnet on the back. So cool. So cool. Thank you so much, Kim. I just... I am still amazed every time at the generosity of stitchers. It's crazy and awesome. And I think everybody should be as nice as us. Okay, really, that's, that's actually the gift stuff. Now it's done. <laughs> Since I got so sidetracked. Oh! Mom rescued this for me. She was at her quilt guild meeting and they had a garage sale one night and a lady was getting rid of Mill Hill kits. And my mom called me and I said, take them all. Cause she had them list, she had them priced at like a dollar and two dollars, you know, depending on the kit. Well, my mom <laughs> actually asked her if she'd take $20 for all of them. And she said, yes score. Ouch. Well, our autumn harvest. And these are full kits. They have not been opened or used. Stocking. Another stocking. Whatever I don't use these, they will be pay it forwards or um, giveaways or something. An angel. And that's it for the small ones. But then it's a buttoned and beaded kit. I'm probably going to stitch that one for my mom because it's a snowman. She loves snowmen. And then it has, you know, the bunny button and everything. Super cute. And what series is this? This is the Northwoods Santas. There's three of them. And then there's three Woodland Santas. And three Musical Santas. So again, you know, whatever I don't use, these, these are going to be passed on. You know, past the stash, um, giveaways, whatever. But I told her, I said, take them all. I mean, it's a hell of a deal. 20 bucks for all that. And even better, she didn't make me pay her back. <laughs> Although, I'll have to be careful not to remind her of that. Here comes the cat again. Nope, here comes both cats again. Okay. This is where everything gets a bit ridiculous. I'm not even going to go through all of these guys. I just, I, I, I can't, but <laughs> magazines that I've gotten, there's really, I mean, there's a, a bunch of patterns in, in this new, um, primitive stitcher that I want to do, but the main one that I saw and wanted to do is this Barbara Anna. So that will be the first one that I stitch out of that magazine. Um, this issue of cross, just cross stitch had a, quite a few that I marked. That's really pretty. That's a Doreen Jones. Um, and then of course the seasonal rabbits, monthly rabbits that they've been doing. And they had some Halloween ornaments. And there was this one. <laughs> and there was, oh my god, I have to stitch this. I have to cover this up. This ornament. Oh, I love it. There's that one. Cross stitcher. Apparently I marked a few in here too. I don't remember what they were though. I 
a mark in here? No. Well, yeah, I had to do this one. Cat nap. Um, these windows, ready, set, stitch. This was that challenge with three designers. I love that with the cat in the quilt. And then this is this is pretty. I don't know that I'll ever stitch it, but it's pretty. I like the bright colors. Look at that. I said I wasn't going to go through these, and then I did. But I'm not showing you everything. I'm not flipping through the entire thing. So. What's that count for? Anything? Probably not. Um, I'm going to stitch this box on the cover. The freebie for that one was super cute. I'm still watching for the specific cross stitch crazy to come out that had the Northern Lights pattern. World of cross stitching. Whoops. Ugh. Came in the mail. Cute little freebie. I wonder how many people are going to use this. Well, it's not an ATC size. Well, it could be. The next theme for our ATC swap is fashion. <laughs> Would work pretty well, huh? Oh, I know why I got this one. Oh no, this was my subscription, but I know what I'm stitching in this one, sorry. This dragon. Oh my god. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. It's a Maria Diaz. Winged Wonder. So cool. Okay. So that's really it for, for patterns. This, this is where it gets kind of, like I said before, ridiculous. Floss and fabric. I know that it's built up partly because it's been a month since I've done a video, but it's, cats are making all kinds of noise. It's also, um, it's also been some extra orders that I really probably should have refrain from having but whatever this was my floss of the month um from color and cotton must have been august yeah august so we've got chic and this is not good lighting for this or something white oh hey i know since i'm in the office area you'd think i could just find a piece of printer paper okay here's the colors so again, Chic, Mulberry, Highlands, Brandy, and Heather. Put those away. Gotta put those away. Hand dyed by Rolanda. Fantastic colors. I've got a Halloween pack ordered from her. Two Halloween packs. I think I got both of the Halloween packs she listed so excited for those um i picked up the the collection for tis the season from victorian motto um i know i'm going to stitch that pattern but i'm probably not doing it as the stitch along i just i've got too much other stuff that i'm doing but these are just wow um trying to get these so you can spread them out. Look at, look at those. Oh, gorgeous. I actually just ordered today her Bewitched collection <laughs> for Halloween. It's all grays. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Gray is one of those colors. You, there's so many different tones. Um, not bad to keep on hand at all. This gets to stay in that package. See these drawers right here? This one and this one. Oh, and this one. This is my hand dyed floss and I have them by color. Purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, coral, pink, red. This is my neutrals brown, black, white. And this is my multicolored. What is my cat eating? Look, you can see 
Revy's found a spot to lay. Um, my next nest egg from Trisha, Dinky Dice. So pretty. So pretty, so pretty. My um, silk collection is getting to be decent size. Now I just need to remember to start swapping out silks and cottons for, you know, cottons for silks for some of my regular stitching. I am sorry in advance. This is so jumpy. <laughs> like I said, I'll try better next time. <laughs> okay, so my Victorian model, I had won a free month of, um, floss 12 12 colors and I had asked Nancy if I could pay for my regular limited edition colors and then get the prim for the freebie which is how I came to be now subscribed for both I'm not gonna pull these all out because you can see from the twisting she does they're just amazing I, I, and I love how much floss you get on these. If you are thinking about starting a floss of the month, this is the one to do. So reasonably priced compared to other, um, over dyes, hand dyes, you know, weeks, gel arts, all of those. Definitely do that one. Oh, hey guys. Do you remember when I said that um, I really needed to stop ordering from Moe's Sale because I just had so much stuff? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, I really did a good job sticking with that, huh? No. But look. Look at these. These are all the, you know, like, solids or semi-solids. Hers always smell so good too. Need to put those away. Oh, put those away. And then these are so pretty. Remember when I got the Moana collection because they were so bright? Yeah, look, there's some more bright. God, I have a problem, don't I? Mo probably doesn't think so because I'm buying them from her, but you know, whatever. So pretty. Um, and then I got a couple of her variated variation packs. Yellow and like a khaki color. I'm just gonna leave that there. That's all floss. I still have fabric to show you. What are we at? 38 minutes? Awesome. <laughs> Stash unload. 32 count, fat eighth, picture this plus mellow. Mellow is one of my favorites. I'm, mellow, never gonna catch a true color, but just that slight yellow. And then I got, oh, I got two more. Another fat eighth of fog. Also 32 count. And then a 32 count Lugana. I don't know how to pronounce this. Tycho? Tycho? I don't, I don't know. I like some of this modeling in here. So. There's another one. Victorian motto fabric beautiful gray if I hadn't already found fabric for Lady of the Flag this would have been this would have been it it's a, a gray with a blue tint it would have been perfect Another 32 count oh I picked these up at work 36 count linen 
mellow. Because like I said, I really like that color. It's a good, it, it really is a good color. It's It's got that yellow, but it's not yellow. It, it's a good neutral. Uh, 28 count Lugana in Dusk. Yeah, because stitching on black is fun, right? This was my fabric of the month. Uh, my last fabric of the month, I guess. Yeah, from Stephanie. Um, Dragonstone. Oh, wait. This was July's. Maybe I haven't gotten August yet. I don't know. It's got a green... What is that? 32 count. I'm trying to kind of separate while I go. Fabric of the month from... Coloring cotton last month, pumpkin souffle, and I ended up with 36 count this time. That'll be a good one to have in the stash. Oops, that's not my 36 count pile. That is. Oh my god, you guys. I got on eBay. Okay, so I really should explain, I guess, that a lot of this has been fueled by stress. Um, Ethan started school. We've had some other stressors. I'm going to start doing my life updates at the end because while I hope that everybody kind of likes to get to know each other by watching FlossTube and hearing life updates, I know some people just want to see the stitching and be done. So I'm going to start moving life updates to the end and those that want to stick around and catch up, we can do that. But anyway, there's been a lot of emotional shopping. Things are calming down. I mean, we'll, we're paying our bills. It's not that bad. But, you know, it's it's time to rein it in. So, but I got an eBay. And I got six, I won six fat eighths. And they are all um, Garibaldi's Needleworks. Four of them are even weave. Two of them are linen. Hi, cat. So, I got sweet raisins. Nice burgundy and a cattail. And lapis. Nice blue. More 28 count even weave. Autumn red. And this is a very nice red. And 28 count even weave. This is autumn orange. And this is truly orange. This is not showing up nice. The lighting is not playing nice with that one. Cats back in the spot. And then I got two, one in auction for two um, Fat Eighth 28 count linen. And one of them is this coral pink. This is showing up like the orange the other one is supposed to be. This is a really pretty coral. And this is called Royalty Deep Dark Purple. No plans. And Rolanda. Rolanda strikes again. Rolanda strikes again. And she was so funny too. Um, she posted fabrics in her in her group or uh, Etsy page. And I purchased six. Two, three, four. I, I bought six. And I <laughs> I sent her a message and I said, you know, we're gonna have to talk about this. I'm going to need you to start sending cards that say congratulations on your win so my husband thinks that I won this stuff. Okay, so fast forward. Now she's in Canada, so it takes a little bit longer to get to me. So fast forward to when it shows up at my house. And keep in mind that, you know, we've had some really stressful weeks. Um, I opened my package and there was a card in it. <laughs> And inside the card she wrote, um, congratulations, you're the lucky winner, enjoy your windfall. And I went, wow, what did I win? And I'm like looking to see what's extra in here. I'm like, no, I, I paid for all six of these. These are, you know, these are not a winning. And I just sat there and sat there and I messaged her and I was like, I actually messaged her and said, what did I win? And she laughed at me. And like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. It had to have been like 10 minutes later. It hit me and I went, oh my God. That was because I made a reference to sending me cards. So, 
Rolanda, thank you. I'm a dummy. <laughs> and um, everyone else, Rolanda really will send you a card that says you are a winner in case you need to show that to your husband. So, 28 count even weave in delicate pink. These are all fat quarters, I think. No, they're not. Some are different sizes. Very pretty. None of these have plans, but I just couldn't pass them up. And after starting that butterfly on her fabric, there are patterns out there that are just going to be perfect for these. So why not? 28 count. This one is called Sweet Blossom. And this one is... Oh! 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 And yeah, the lighting just doesn't do them justice, but you get a really good idea of the colors. Cool, cool. I can hear our kids and husband jumping around upstairs. What time is it? 7.30. Am I going to avoid bedtime? Probably not. This does not have a name. It's another 28 count even weave. Yellows and blues. Turns into a little bit of green. Oh, kids are laughing. My husband gets the kids going. If he watches this, love you. Um, gets the kids going. They, they're just, he's like a third child when they get going and wrestling. It. And I have to be the one that says, someone's going to get hurt. And sure as shit, five minutes later, somebody's crying. That's what they're doing upstairs. 28 count teal blue. First time I've gotten a solid from her. Or a single color, I guess. I mean, there's great modeling in there. Um, this might work really well for a mermaid. Mermaid Mira. We'll see. Speaking of mermaid mirrors, I could have sworn that I commented on a stash unload and claimed Blackbeard's... Blackbeard's Princess? I, I think that's the name of it, one of the mermaids. I don't think I've paid for it, or if I have, it hasn't shown up. I'm s Whatever. If I paid for it and I didn't get it, it's, I'm not worried about it. It won't be the end of the world, but I don't know. 36 count linen, blues and greens. Oh man, that's not showing up at all. It's too see-through. There's a better idea. Great colors. This would be a good one for a mermaid too, with blues and greens. 36 count, another 36 count. Maybe they were folded just like the other one. Purples, blues, greens. Oh, it's just. And Rolanda is another one that her, her fabrics and floss just smell awesome. Awesome. Okay. That's all of my fabric. Am I done? Why no, I'm not done. <laughs> okay. Oh, now it's the other cat. Okay, well, whatever. I went to Hobby Lobby because, you know, I always go to Hobby Lobby because why not? Because you can spend money at Hobby Lobby, right? Um, what did I even go for? I don't know. Probably didn't need anything. Oh, I bought some, I used the coupon and bought some more, um white even weave so that I can do some of my own dyeing someday whatever so anyway I noticed in their scrapbook section they had their flea market fancy by the paper studio it was half price cool watch for some needle minders to show up in giveaways and or my Etsy shop which might not be an Etsy shop anymore I cannot believe the fees that I paid in August. They're like four times what I used to pay if I sold three items. That's all I sold, three items. It was ridiculous. I, You're not making any money anymore. And I'm not raising my prices. That's not happening. So Etsy, it, I might be just starting a Facebook group. I don't know. Anyway, these charms, so cute. I love that cat in the sunglasses. Cute little swans. Oh, those are so cute. So 
so cute. And then cactus, llamas. Never had a thing for llamas, but those were cute. More swans or fancy birds. Yeah, I'm just taking the piece off the bottom and not leaving that on. For the price I paid, I don't care. Unicorns and flamingos. Okay, so I got those. Now, also for the Etsy, the crafting side of it, it might not be an Etsy shop anymore. Um, I'm going to be taking my scissor fobs and needle minders to retreat in October. So I ordered I ordered more guitar picks so that I could make some new needle minders. Um, most of my needle minders are always going to be the guitar pick that I hand stamp and seal with a spray. Um, that's what I started out doing, that's what I like doing, that's what it'll be. So I got on eBay and did a little bit of guitar pick shopping um, from China because they're really cheap that way. But I'm trying to get these in here. Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry because I'm not upstairs taking care. Oh, I just noticed. <laughs> Do you like this bruise? I tried to impale myself on a bracket at work last Thursday. <laughs> I'm so clumsy. I swear to God, 10 minutes before I walked into the stupid thing, I was walking by the shelf and went, God, somebody moved that and it's really kind of close to this counter. Somebody's going to walk into that. And I meant, man, that would really suck, because you could actually impale yourself. And ten minutes later, I did. Guitar picks. These are so oh, cool. I only have 12 of them. They were a little bit more pricey. But I can't wait to stamp on those. So, if you're liking these, I think I'm going to be putting mermaids on them. You're going to have to be quick, because there's only going to be 12 Maybe even less, because I'm going to have to save one for myself. I'm going to have to use a couple for giveaways. So you're really going to have to act fast. And then I bought... I, I just got a ton. I think there's a hundred in here. It's just... I love the... Um, like, pearl ones. They're just a little bit prettier. And then I bought another pack of what was supposed to be different colors, and then, I don't know, it was probably the same seller even. China sent me the same ones, but whatever. They'll get used. Okay. That's all my shit. Stuff. Sorry. I try not to swear on my YouTube channel, because I do have a horrible potty mouth, which you could tell... <laughs> We're moving on to life update now. Um, a week before school started, I got a text one day from daycare that Ethan got a timeout because he said, what the hell? Um, and I laughed and I said, well, at least he didn't say what the F. And three days later, I kid you not, there was, <laughs> Ethan got a timeout because he said, what the F? Only he said the word. <laughs> and he apparently said it just like I do. So, thankfully, my children, I've never yelled at them for swearing because they've never been the kids that repeat it just to get a reaction. I don't yell at them. I say, we don't, you shouldn't use that word. You can't use that word. That is an adult word, and mommy shouldn't use that word either. So far, it's worked fine. Um... But I really do need to just actually clean up my mouth, I guess. Whatever. My husband doesn't swear at all. So I can't even blame it on him. Um, okay, so school. Ethan. School started 
Well, this is the second week of school. School started last week. Half day on Monday. And then they had regular full days. This week... Has he already been in school for two weeks? They started August 20th. Yeah. So this is the third week he's been in school. So the first day was a half day. Ethan is always going to be going to Adventure Club, which is the after school program, because we're not home by the time the bus gets dropped off, so we have to have a daycare for him. So he's going to do Adventure Club. He's always going to do Adventure Club. I made sure that we wrote that on his the little tag that you put on their backpacks, you know, rides, bus, whatever, in the morning, Adventure Club in the afternoon. Great. I left work early on Monday because he'd only he only had a half day. It was a brand new experience. I didn't want to leave him at Adventure Club for like five hours because the school was dismissed like at 1140. So I, I worked until one and I figured, okay, great. I'll get to the school by 130. That will be about the same amount of time that he would be at Adventure Club from a normal dismissal until we get out of work and pick him up. Cool. Left work, stomping at gas. I'm a block, not even kidding, a block from school. I get a phone call from the freaking bus garage that my kid is at the bus garage. Yep, day one, day one. And Ethan is a very nervous, uh, sensitive kid, which is fine. He's, he's a great kid, but... He freaks out about certain things. He freaks out about loud noises sometimes. I, I mean, and that's stuff he can't control. That is his his personality. That is, is his. I, I'm I'm not. I don't want him to change. But I was just so worried about the damage that it was going to do to him on his first day of school. Drove to the bus garage. Pick him up. It's now 1:45. I walk in the bus garage. He's sitting in this chair by the door with three, looked like maybe middle school age kids. Must have also rode, I don't know. They didn't know where they lived and got off at the wrong bus stop. I don't know. So weird. Um, and he, he was fine. He picked up his backpack. We walked to the car. He was kind of in heaven because it was the bus garage and he got to see all the school buses and you know him and vehicles. So... We walk to the car, we get in the car, and as soon as I buckled him in, he just lost it. And I felt so bad for him. I'm like, let's go home, watch some TV, you know, like, just call me down. Well, then I found out that, you know, it's now 1.45. He had a lunch in his backpack because he was supposed to go to Adventure Club. Nobody told him he could eat it, so he didn't. He didn't know what was going on. So the poor kid was starving, too. It's just, I'm on the way home with him, and I took my, I disconnected my phone from Bluetooth so it wouldn't go through the car speakers. I got on the phone and I called the school, and there was somebody still in the office. This poor lady got an earful from me. I felt bad. Um, but I mean, it was controlled because I had Ethan in the back seat, so I couldn't really, I mean, I wasn't nasty. I just, I explained to her he should never be getting on the bus. He will always be at Adventure Club. Um, there's a child crying. What did I tell you? Five minutes? Yeah. No, really crying, too. Cool. I explained that to her. I said, you know, I, I'm really not happy either because when we went to the open house on the Thursday night before school started, I asked the principal, the teachers, the office staff, everybody. I asked is there Adventure Club on the first day of school because it's a half day? Nobody had an answer. Nobody. It wasn't on their website, like a Facebook page. It wasn't, you know, I emailed the person in charge of Adventure Club on Friday. I didn't get a reply from her until Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Stuff happens, but maybe we should work on communication a little bit. So, I mean, I told her, I said, you know, I'm not happy and I'm not impressed. Whatever. 
She called me back later that afternoon. She said she talked to the teacher, made sure they're aware that he should always be at Adventure Club, yada, yada, yada. Said that at the open house on Thursday night when I had filled out the general information that I had marked that he would be taking the bus home on the first day. Maybe I did. Everybody makes mistakes. I very well could have. But if I did, it was because the question w must have been worded weirdly because he would never be taking the bus. And, you know, M Brian said the same thing. He's like, I sat next to you when you filled that out. You would not have done that. You, you know, like, so I don't know if it was somebody would try and cover their butt or whatever, but it's behind us. When we asked him what his favorite part of the day was, he still said it was riding the bus. Cool. Rest of that week went okay until Friday morning. He did not want to get on the bus. Come to find out Thursday, he had hit his head on the window when the bus turned at one point, which, I mean, it's going to happen. Whatever. He's a small kid. He weighs like 32 freaking pounds. So he hit his head. Well, then he was scared. And it was like, well, you're not going to hit your head all the time. You know, it's an accident. Don't worry about it. So Friday, he finally gets on the dang bus. We get it, he gets home and we find out that he's still worked up about riding the bus. Well, that day he fell out, because we told him not to sit by the window, he fell out of the seat into the aisle. It's the poor kid. He's had a little bit of trauma, but whatever. I did email that teacher the first week. She said he's doing, he was doing perfectly fine. So it, everything was normal. Um, and he does like Adventure Club now. He hasn't cried about it because that was the other thing. The second day of school, I picked him up, and as soon as he saw me walk in the building, he started bawling. And I was like, "Oh goodness, this is gonna be, this is gonna be rough." But we're settling into school. We're we're settling into a routine. We found a way to make it work with who's picking up which kids, so that you know I can get home a little bit before them and maybe get dinner going if I need to. Which hasn't happened yet because we're still trying to figure everything out. But, um, so that was one stress. Or then, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before. Yeah. So the Tuesday before, two weeks ago, Brian's mom had been sick for a while like two weeks and she was nauseous and I kept telling Brian your dad needs to take her to the doctor that's not normal you know like, people don't have a stomach flu for two weeks if she's getting sick and nauseous there's something wrong and Brian I did hear Brian tell his dad like, on the phone a couple times you know you need to call the doctor he finally took her to the doctor on Tuesday she was also jaundice at that point. They sent her right for blood work. Wednesday night she had a CAT scan. No, MRI. MRI in? Wednesday, either way. One, something on Wednesday night. Thursday at work, Brian calls me. And he never calls me at work. It's the afternoon. And I answered the phone and I said, you know, or I missed the call. So I called him back and I said, what's going on? He said, dad's on the way to the hospital with mom. She has to go in through the ER. They're going to work her in for surgery. And I'm like, surgery on what? <laughs> and he goes, I don't know. There's something inside her poisoning her. <laughs> poisoning her. <laughs> Getting information out of his parents is challenging. And it's... it. We laugh about it. Because it legit is funny, too. And they know it. And, you know... That first night that Brian came home from the hospital, he, because he went to the hospital with them, um, I mean, he told me, he, he sat down on the couch and he said, listening to the doctors and, and, you know, mom and dad is actually comical because mom doesn't have any short-term memory and that's because of a traumatic head injury she had when she was a teenager. She's never had a short-term memory, basically. And to the degree of, she can remember, I mean, it's very unpredictable. She, she remembered me basically as soon as we started dating. She remembers stuff like that, but 
we can open Christmas presents, put them in the next room to take home later, and five minutes later she says, I'm not sure what I got, I'll have to wait till I get home. I mean, so it's, it's kind of, you know, there's no way to predict what she's going to remember and what she's not. Dad is deaf. Like, severely hard of hearing. So you put those two in a room with a doctor and you're not getting accurate information. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, it, it was a good thing that Brian was there. And I'm glad, you know, that he could be there to help them. But it, it boiled down to, um, not only was it gallbladder like I, I figured it was, um, it was, she had a gallstone blocking a bile duct which was why she was jaundiced it, it affected her liver this stone was 11 millimeters this has been going on for years there's there's no way she hasn't had gallbladder attacks before it's it's got to so they were going to take her gallbladder out when they brought her in that thursday and then they did blood work and a couple of levels were too high of something you know so they said we can't so then they did this other procedure, ERCP or something, and they went in and broke up the um, gallstones manual lithotripsy, basically, and removed the pieces. And they there was a stone embedded in her gallbladder or something. I, I mean, it's it was a mess. Then they waited. She was still in the hospital. They admitted her. They waited a couple days and actually did remove the gallbladder then. And the doctor said it was one of the toughest he's ever had to get out. So this has been an issue. But she's never said anything. So she was in the hospital for just under a week. I think she w you know, went on a Thursday. I think she came home on a Wednesday. So cool. Brian's still been, you know, helping out with that. The other night they took her back to the ER because one of her legs was swollen. Thankfully it's not a blood clot. Everything's fine. Um, but, you know, always better to be safe than sorry. So it's good that we live so close. Um, I'm glad that Brian is able to help his parents with that. So that was just another stressor, um, of course. So that's where we've been. Kyle Reckemeyer. Kyle. I think I said that right. He had a floss tube video that I watched the other day. He was challenging people to say his name correctly. Uh, that was completely random, huh? Okay, so I'm going to call it quits because it's a little over an hour. I've rambled. I've jumped around. I've thoroughly confused people, I'm sure. I have a crap load of stuff to put away now and I'm sure my children are gonna need me to tuck them in because what it's eight o'clock yeah so I'm gonna do that oh hey look I did makeup again I'm trying this whole take care of your appearance thing I think I'd rather get the 20 extra minutes of sleep in the morning <laughs> but I'm having fun with it um I've always loved lipstick so I'm having fun with that and um I've gotten a lot of compliments at work, so pretty cool. Um, yeah. So tomorrow morning, I head out to retreat with my mom. It's a couple hours away. I'll be there till Sunday evening, hoping to get a lot of finishes, if not a lot of progress on whips, and I'll have a lot of stuff to show you after that. Probably not much in the way of haul, except for whatever shows up at the door while I'm gone, which I'm kind of nervous about because we talked about that stress shopping and... I'm going to be gone for four days and won't be able to intercept packages. I might be in trouble. Oh well. Um, but I'll have a lot to share. So I'll get back on Sunday and I will film something next week. We will, we will get to be weekly again. I hope everybody had a good week. Well, a good month. I, I haven't talked to him. Oh! Last video was short, five minute, announcing the uh, giveaway winner. I have still not received contact from the giveaway winner, and I can't remember off the top of my head what their name was because I have brain damage from my children, and I don't have notes in front of me. So check out that last video. I also commented on their original 
um, entry to the giveaway so if you want to see if you won go look and if I haven't heard anything by next week I will get the name so I can remember okay yeah we got to be done I'm babbling idiot at this point have a great night I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll be thinking about everybody while I am stitching away oh Ah, oh, retreat. I wanted so badly to take the new aquamarine fairy. Didn't come in yet. Bummer, dude. My mom, my mom was like, why do you have to take something new to start? Don't you have enough projects already? She doesn't get it. Um, so I'm not going to start that one, that retreat. Which means I have to find something else to start because you have to have a start at a retreat. Um, that's going to be the rest of my night. It's 8 o'clock, so maybe by 11 I'll actually have some stuff packed. And then tomorrow morning I can throw some clothes in a suitcase, because that's the lowest priority for a retreat. Okay, I'm leaving for real. Have a great night. Happy stitching. I'll see everybody next week.